Sure, good to be with you again, Ivan. Well, anything that comes out of the mouths of Russian officials all the way up to Mr. Putin on this particular incident is absurd. Uh, trying to blame it on the Ukrainians because these uh, men, these suspects, allegedly were caught heading towards the Ukrainian border. That is after uh, the Belarusian president said they were actually headed towards his border. There's just a lot of things that don't add up in their claims. Uh, the, the theory is still out there as well, of course, that this could have been a staged attack by the Russians, given that um, it took so long, for example, their security services to show up at that entertainment venue and, um, you know, that it would be used as a pretext for Mr. Putin to not only clamp down further on internal dissent, but also escalate the Ukrainian war. But um, it, it needs to be said that this is a huge embarrassment for him, I think, amongst, amongst most Russian um, voters, because a big part of his platform was uh, internal security. And this was a huge failure, obviously. Mm. What does the evidence point to? Or is this really hard to analyze as well? It is hard to analyze. But the one thing we do know for sure is that the region that the suspects were headed to and where they were caught is uh, pretty much an active war zone. And the Ukrainians have not only debunked the theory or the claim that and there was any link with Ukraine, but they said anyone, anyone headed towards that zone either has to be suicidal or crazy. So that part doesn't add up as well. Mm. What impact are these narratives having on Ukraine? Well, uh, look, as I said here right now, we are under an air raid siren alert in Kiev. It's the second one in 12 hours. And um, there is um, increased fear here. I have to say, I've detected it not only here in Kiev, but also where I'm based in Odessa. Uh, the difference that's happening right now in the past few days is that the Russians are attacking not only in the nighttime, but also in the daytime. And uh, the other thing is they're using uh, hypersonic, supersonic missiles. Ivan, is very similar to what I saw in Tel Aviv in November. When air raid sirens go off, people have less than a minute to go to the bomb shelters. And then that's a new phenomenon here in Ukraine. It's caused a lot of fear, a lot of worry. Do you think things have changed since this Moscow attack in terms of uh, Russia's strategy? It has. Um, the other thing the Russians are doing even before the attack, but I'm, I'm expecting they're going to escalate even more. I think they're going to possibly even do a new mobilization. But the other thing that's changed is they've returned targeting critical infrastructure. Hence, massive, massive blackouts um, in major Ukrainian cities. For the first time on Monday, Odessa was totally in the dark. We have not seen that in a year. So that's a fact affected many businesses. And the other thing, uh, just quickly, Ivan, underneath the surface that I'm seeing, it's kind of a, a death by a thousand cuts. As you were seeing some of the best and brightest in Ukraine, especially in Odessa, reevaluate their stay in Odessa and planning for a safer ground in Europe. And that's, of course, a huge loss to, to any economy. And police in Kharkiv say uh, Russia's using aerial bombs there. What can you tell us about that? Well, what, what we're seeing mostly is, uh, in, in Kharkiv especially, uh, you know, repeated bombings to the point where schools, for example, have been forced underground. Uh, they're building special classrooms underground to protect people. I just spoke to the Canadian ambassador yesterday. She was just in Kharkiv, and she could not believe the extent of the destruction. So the mix of bombs that they're using is the most important thing here, causing massive, massive destruction. And of course, Kharkiv being so close to the Russian border, they have even less time to react to air raid sirens. What have other countries such as the US and UK said about the Moscow attack and the current situation in Ukraine? Well, first of all, the Americans have debunked anything that's come out of uh, Russia's mouth. Uh, they actually warned uh, the Russians uh, in early March that an attack was imminent and they warned American citizens to get out. But uh, what the Americans really need to say, especially to the Ukrainians right now, is that we have your back. The $60 billion that is held up in Congress right now will come your way. It is looking, let me be clear about this, it is looking very, very bad for Ukraine right now. If that $60 billion does not come in, it's a possibility that within two years, Russia could occupy the entire Ukrainian territory. They need this so badly right now. I can't overstate it. Michael Bosakou, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for your analysis. My pleasure. Thank you.